Welcome to our exploration of how the moon's gravity affects Earth. You know, we often look up at the night sky and see the moon as this silent, luminous disk. But it's so much more than that. It's a celestial dance partner, locked in a gravitational tango with our planet. From tides to Earth's rotation, let's dive into the fascinating ways our closest celestial neighbor influences our planet. You know, when we think about gravity, we often think about being stuck to the Earth, right? It's what keeps us grounded, quite literally. But gravity is a force that extends far beyond just keeping our feet on the ground. It's a universal force that governs the motion of planets, stars, and even galaxies. And one of the most fascinating examples of gravity's reach is the relationship between the Earth and the Moon. The Moon's gravity, though much weaker than Earth's, has a profound effect on our planet. It's what drives the tides, this constant ebb and flow of our oceans. Imagine the moon as a giant magnet, pulling on the water in our oceans. This pull is what creates the tides, and it's a force that has been at work for billions of years. It's what drives the tides, this constant ebb and flow of our oceans. The gravitational pull of the moon causes the water in the oceans to bulge out in the direction of the moon. This bulge is what we experience as high tide. But the story doesn't end there. The Earth is also rotating, and this rotation plays a crucial role in the tidal cycle. Picture this. The Moon, as it orbits Earth, pulls on the water, like an invisible rope. This pull is strongest on the side of Earth, facing the Moon, causing a bulge, a high tide. But there's more to the story. The Earth itself is also being pulled by the Moon's gravity, and this creates a second bulge on the opposite side of the planet. This pull is strongest on the side of Earth facing the Moon, causing a bulge, a high tide. This is the direct effect of the Moon's gravity. But what about the other side of the Earth? Why is there a high tide there as well? The answer lies in the concept of inertia. Now you might think there's just one bulge, but here's where it gets interesting. On the opposite side of Earth, there's a second high tide. Why? Because of inertia. Inertia is the tendency of an object to resist changes in its state of motion. In this case, the water on the far side of the Earth is being flung outward due to the Earth's rotation. On the opposite side of Earth, there's a second high tide. Why? Because of inertia. It's like when you're on a carousel and you feel that outward force. This outward force is what creates the second bulge or high tide on the side of the Earth farthest from the Moon. It's like when you're on a carousel and you feel that outward force. That's inertia, and it causes the water to bulge out on the side farthest from the Moon as well. So, we have two high tides on opposite sides of the Earth, and in between these high tides we have low tides, that's inertia, and it causes the water to bulge out on the side farthest from the Moon as well, so, we've got two high tides on opposite sides of Earth. These high tides are not static, they move around the planet as the Earth rotates and the Moon orbits, this creates a dynamic and ever-changing pattern of tides, so, we've got two high tides on opposite sides of Earth. Now the areas between these bulges experience low tides. These low tides occur because the water is being pulled away towards the high tide areas. This creates a rhythmic pattern of rising and falling sea levels that we observe as tides. Now the areas between these bulges experience low tides, and this whole cycle, this rhythmic rise and fall of sea levels, that's the moon's gravitational dance with our oceans. It's a dance that has been going on for billions of years, shaping our coastlines and influencing marine life. And this whole cycle, this rhythmic rise and fall of sea levels, that's the moon's gravitational dance with our oceans. It's a beautiful and intricate dance that reminds us of the interconnectedness of our universe. The tides are not just a local phenomenon, they are a global event that connects all the oceans of the world. It's happening all the time, shaping coastlines, influencing marine life and reminding us of the interconnectedness of our universe. The next time you stand by the ocean and watch the tides, remember that you are witnessing a cosmic dance, a ballet choreographed by the moon and the earth, a testament to the power and beauty of gravity. We all know the earth spins, right? It's a fundamental aspect of our planet, creating the rhythm of day and night that we experience every 24 hours. This rotation is something we often take for granted, but it's a crucial part of life on earth. It's why we have day and night, the rising and setting of the sun, the transition from light to dark, all of it is a direct result of Earth's rotation. But there's more to this story than just the simple spinning of our planet. But did you know that the moon is actually putting the brakes on Earth's spin? It's true. 
The moon, our constant companion in the night sky, is exerting a subtle but persistent force on our planet. It's like a slow, cosmic dance with friction playing a key role. Imagine two dancers moving in perfect harmony, but with a slight resistance that gradually slows their movements. This is what's happening between the Earth and the Moon. You see, as the Moon orbits Earth and pulls on our oceans, it creates friction. This gravitational pull is responsible for the tides, the rhythmic rise and fall of sea levels that we observe along coastlines. This friction, known as tidal breaking or tidal friction, acts like a brake pad, ever so slightly slowing down Earth's rotation. It's a minuscule effect, but it's constant and unrelenting. It's a gradual process, but over millions of years it adds up. How gradual? Well, it's almost imperceptible on a human time scale, but over geological epochs, the impact is profound. Well, we're talking about a difference of about 2 milliseconds per century. That might not seem like much, but when you consider the vast expanse of geological time, it becomes quite significant. That might not seem like much, but over geological time scales, it's significant. Imagine the cumulative effect over billions of years. The days on Earth have been gradually lengthening since the planet's formation. It means that the days are getting longer, ever so slightly. Each day is just a tiny bit longer than the one before, a process that has been ongoing for eons. In the distant future, a day on Earth will be much longer than 24 hours, thanks to the Moon's gravitational influence. This slow dance with the Moon is a testament to the intricate and interconnected nature of our universe. Chapter 3 The Moon's Recession, A Slow Farewell So we've established that the Moon is slowing down Earth's rotation. But here's the thing, energy like matter can't just disappear, it has to go somewhere, right? In this case, the energy from Earth's rotation isn't vanishing, it's being transferred to the Moon, and this transfer of energy is causing the Moon to slowly spiral away from us. It's true! The Moon is moving away from Earth at a rate of about 3.8 centimeters per year. That's about the same rate your fingernails grow. It's a slow farewell, a gradual stretching of the cosmic tether between our planet and its Moon. But don't worry, it'll be billions of years before the Moon bids us a final adieu. Chapter 4. Earth's Tilt. A balancing act with the Moon. You know, Earth's tilt is a pretty big deal. It's what gives us our seasons. But did you know that the Moon plays a crucial role in keeping that tilt in check? Earth's axis, the imaginary line around which it spins, is tilted at about 23.5 degrees. Now, without the Moon's gravitational influence, that tilt would be all over the place, like a spinning top about to topple over. The Moon's gravity acts like an invisible hand, stabilizing Earth's tilt, keeping it from wobbling too much. This stability is essential for our planet's climate. Without it, we could experience extreme climate swings, making it much harder for life to thrive. So, next time you see the Moon, give it a nod of thanks for helping keep our planet's climate in check. Chapter 5, Minor Gravitational Effects, The Moon's Subtle Touches We've talked about the Moon's influence on tides, Earth's rotation, and its tilt. The Moon's gravitational pull is a force that has shaped our planet in numerous ways, some of which are quite obvious, while others are more subtle and less well-known. But the Moon's gravitational reach doesn't stop there. Beyond the tides and the axial tilt, the Moon's influence extends to other, less visible aspects of our planet, it also has some subtle yet fascinating effects on Earth's crust and atmosphere. These effects are not as immediately noticeable as the tides, but they are equally important in understanding the Moon's role in Earth's geological and atmospheric dynamics. Now, the Moon's gravitational pull on Earth's crust is much weaker than its pull on the oceans. This is because the solid crust is much less flexible than the liquid water of the oceans. However, the gravitational force is still present, exerting a subtle influence on the Earth's surface but it's still there, ever so slightly stretching and compressing the Earth. This stretching and compressing, though minimal, can have significant long-term effects on the geological features of our planet. These tidal forces are most noticeable in areas with thin crust, like near volcanoes. In these regions the Moon's gravitational pull can cause the crust to flex more noticeably, potentially influencing volcanic activity. Some scientists believe that the Moon's gravity might even play a role in triggering earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. While this is still a topic of ongoing research, the potential connection between lunar forces and seismic activity is a fascinating area of study. And then there's the atmosphere. The Moon's influence extends beyond the solid Earth to the gaseous envelope that surrounds our planet. 
the moon's gravity can actually cause tiny bulges in Earth's atmosphere, much like it does with the oceans. These atmospheric tides are a subtle but real phenomenon, demonstrating the moon's pervasive influence. These atmospheric tides are very small and difficult to detect, but they're another example of how the moon's gravity is always at work, shaping our planet in subtle ways. From the depths of the oceans to the heights of the atmosphere, the moon's gravitational touch is a constant if often unnoticed presence in our world. Outro the moon, Earth's celestial partner. In summary, the moon's gravitational pull plays a crucial role in shaping Earth's environment from oceanic tides to the stability of its axial tilt. It's a constant dance, a delicate balance between two celestial bodies. Without it, Earth's conditions would be vastly different. Our oceans would be calmer, our days would be shorter, and our climate would be far less stable. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more fascinating insights into our universe.